Welcome traders to Ticknell Weekly Market Outlook, a week commencing the 8th of February with me, Patrick Munley. Before Friday's release of the January US jobs report, the dollar was in positive territory on the week against all G10 currencies. Despite global equities having staged a solid performance in the back end of last week, I uh, suspect that um, weakening of the US dollar equities inverse correlation was partly due to some squaring of dollar positions. According to CFTC data, the US dollar aggregate net short position, positioning versus G10 was at minus 18% of open interest as of the 26th of January. A mixed but prevalently grim set of employment numbers on Friday triggered a drop in the dollar across the board. Uh, the market reaction to the bad data was channeled through rising expectations of aggressive fiscal stimulus by Biden, which in turn fuels higher inflation expectations and abating speculation about earlier than forecasted tapering by the Fed. This leaves a key US dollar bearish argument, the unsupportive US real rate intact. In this sense, the CPI numbers for January will be closely monitored this week to track any signs of recovery in prices. Any above consensus read should have a negative impact on the US real rates and the dollar as the Fed's flexible inflation targeting should keep the reaction in the front end rates muted. Um, broadly in line with consensus, uh, I think a 0.4% month on month increase uh, should be in the headline CPI figure. Further advancements on the fiscal front will remain centre stage and may keep traders on the optimistic side, but any impact on the dollar may come through the real rate channel rather than from improving risk sentiment. From a technical perspective, the dollar index just came shy of the equality objective at 91.78. We did get a, an outside reversal day on Friday. However, we want to pay close attention as we come into the start of this week to this uh, internal trend line here uh, coming in around 90.50, 90.60. If we hold this level on any uh, initial test in the early part of this week, still look for the potential for another leg to test the equality objective at 91.70 before the fourth wave will complete and we then head lower to test the fifth wave uh, 87.50 downside objective. So um, obviously if we get a close through this um, trend line early in the week then that will add to the, the bearish sentiment and we can anticipate a move down back through the cycle lows at 89.18. Before the, uh, the grim jobs data on Friday, the euro, euro dollar was actually trading below 120 for the first time in two months. And while it was a generalized dollar momentum that kept putting pressure on the pair, uh, the relatively slow vaccination process in the eurozone may have started to take its toll on euro sentiment too. Um, position squaring dynamics may have played a role as well as the euro is materially overbought. Also considering any other fundamentals did not point to euro dollar weakness. The rise in US rates was matched by that in the bonds uh, this last week and US equities have only marginally outperformed European indices. Improvements on the eurozone vaccinations could be key for the euro dollar to find some consolidation back above the 120 mark. But that is unlikely to change rapidly really. If anything, euro dollar bulls will be hoping for two factors to offer some mild support. Good December industrial production data and the confirmation of Mario Draghi has secured a parliamentary majority in Italy. Some ECB speakers, including President Lagarde, look unlikely to deliver any surprising messages and the euro dollar may remain predominantly driven by the dollar side of the equation. So uh, in line with the dollar index, we did get a bullish reversal uh, outside day close on um, on Friday. Again, similar to the dollar index, we really want to pay attention to this trend line. If we can get a close back through 120.90, then we could have completed the ABC correction and we could be back on route to test price cycle highs en route to the 124-125 area. Um, however, if the trend line does contain the, uh, the advance, then I look for one more low in the euro to test the equality objective at 118.98 before bulls re-engage and we can look for uh, more upside momentum in terms of the euro dollar. Uh, Sterling, uh, best performer in the G10 space last week, helped by BOE meeting. 
that, uh, that further reduce the odds of negative rates. They are unlikely to happen over the next six months due to operational risks, while the need to go negative after a six-month period will be rather low, as, uh, as market watchers suspect a strong second quarter economic recovery. Coupled with the fast vaccination story, Sterling looks set to benefit uh, from both those dynamics. On the domestic data front, the focus will be on fourth quarter 2020 GDP, which will release on Friday, with the quarter over quarter likely registering a marginally positive growth. Although this should be reversed in the first quarter 21, given the scale of the lockdown, all eyes are really going to be on the second quarter 2021 GDP and the expectation of a meaningful recovery given the fast vaccination process. December industrial and manufacturing production, also released on Friday, probably have limited impact on sterling. So we've got uh, a decent reversal on Thursday, follow through on Friday, we're back retesting prior highs here, 137.50. If we can get through there, then we look for a test of projected monthly range resistance to 138.70, and even potentially a test of the psychological 140 area in extension. Uh, the yen's inability to cash in on choppy risk sentiment last week has left it rather vulnerable to equity rallies uh, at the back end of last week. With virtually all currencies benefiting from the dollar drop on from Friday's payrolls data, dollar yen remained somewhat supportive as the US Treasury yields kept inching higher and markets see an increased likeliness of an aggressive US fiscal stimulus. Looking ahead, the yen may remain an underperformer in G10, especially if the approval process of Biden's fiscal relief bill progresses further and US inflation keeps recovering, all of which could see the US uh, Treasury 10-year yield supported. On the domestic side, the story might be a bit more supportive for the yen, as the lockdown in some areas of the country, including Tokyo, appears to be yielding good results as cases keep dropping. So from a technical perspective, dollar yen traded into that resistance zone that I talked about last week at the, uh, the yearly pivot there, 105.50. Uh, 105 and we did get a rejection uh, on Friday. We didn't get a close back through the five period VWAP, but I would look now for some corrective price action to see us back down testing the 104.30, 104.50. And from there, we'll see if bulls re-engage to, uh, to take the yen higher again. But if we, uh, if we fail to find support there, and we'll just see, we've got a trend line coming in there as well, as we have with all the other majors at the moment. So if we fail to hold the trend line support, then we can reasonably assume that this was an ABC correction that's completed, and we should be back down retesting the 102.40 en route to the 101.20 lows. And finally, uh, the Aussie faced another week of losses before Friday's recovery, uh, principally based on the dovish tone by the Reserve Bank of Australia that more than offset the positive impact of the global equity rally. Uh, despite the improved global and domestic outlook for the medium term, the Reserve Bank of Australia extended its bond purchase program earlier than expected. It was due to expire in April, keeping the same pace of monthly purchases. Furthermore, the bank provided rather bold forward guidance as it forecasted no rate hikes before 2024. The implications for the Aussie may not be limited to the initial reaction as the rising monetary policy divergence likely warrants an underperformance um, in the Aussie versus other com commodity currencies. Iron ore prices also uh, took a hit on the Aussie at the beginning of the week as prices tumbled on doubts about the resilience of the Chinese demand and fears of rising supply. Prices did recover later in the week, partly thanks to Vale's output missing expectations. Some further uh, correction from such high and prices may be on the cards in the next week, and this uh, would also fuel uh, the Aussie relative underperformance. Next week's calendar is very uh, light in Australia, so external factors will dominate the price action. So similar with the other pairs, the Australian dollar, we've got a nice outside reversal on uh, Friday. Look for some follow through to the upside through the monthly pivot there at 76.80 to encourage a test of its uh, interim trend line resistance at 77.30 through 77.30 and uh, that will encourage uh, bullish spirits and we should see the prior cycle highs regained en route to a test of the ideal 80 uh, psychological level as the next upside objective. 
So that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 8th of February. And I hope to see you all on Thursday at 1pm for the live market analysis session. Thanks very much. Have a great week.